Hey. This is this man's legacy family. Uh, his legacy is ruined now. And you have and you have more mention of Tupac than him. Yeah, that's crazy. Amongst the media, amongst Jada, and amongst mm. his children. Mm -hmm. I know so many men that I've talked to personally and myself who have similar stories where we've dealt with women who are basically out of control. And by us being raised to try to do the right thing, to still try to, you know, marry, marry these women. We've had kids with them. We marry them. We try to do the right things, try to raise the family and just only to be basically like he's going through, basically turned out and basically destroyed. And they are they don't care about the image of how the marriage looks all they care about is how they look in the image so they always are trying to make sure that they're a victim when a lot of the times they're actually the culprit as we can see right here you can see it clear as day that she is basically destroying this man and he's doing everything he can to hold it together and try to hold his family together to try to be a good man at a certain point though brother at a, that's why i'm saying yeah yep, at get a certain you. point when is enough enough I don't, I don't know. Because see, I'm somebody we can who went through. Day, we're looking on the outside, but I'm saying, even if it was you, if you were living his situation right now, when would you say enough's enough? I don't care about the image anymore. My peace, my <laughs> happiness, my stress is more important than me to me than an image. I think it's for each man is their own individual. For each person is their own individual breaking point because. For my story, I went through a lot of cheating before I finally reached that point of enough and just just couldn't take it anymore. When I finally you were cheated reached the on point, a lot, is what you're saying. You got cheated on a lot. Yeah, I went through a lot before I finally realized, you know, because I was trying to make it work because I have all, all my kids are by the same woman. We were married. And, you know, there, there may be questions with my kids, but I never, ever got them tested to find out. I've been there since day one. I raised them. They're could be some questions there, there may could be, be some questions doubts. with with your kids are you yeah. serious yes well my oldest son she admitted that uh she had been that that, that he's a possibility that he might not might not be mine and uh, how old is your oldest how old is your oldest he would have been 25 he passed away when he was seven man brother i'm so sorry to hear that and see that was also a part of it because man. we were fighting so many statistics so we had gotten married right uh we got married right before he died so now I'm, I, had, uh, as a man, I had promised him that he wouldn't be the cause of us getting a divorce. So on top of that, I'm fighting against that and trying to keep our marriage together along with battling yeah. everything else. But realizing, finally coming to a point and realizing that I was married. She never was married. I was in love. She was never in love. I was a teammate and a family member. She never was. And it just finally reached a point. And I really honestly... And I'm going to be truly transparent here. I honestly didn't get it until I got out of it, got divorced, got into a relationship with a with a, with a, uh, a woman who she certified as a narcissist. She finally admitted it. I knew nothing about narcissism going into this relationship. Of course, all her exes were narcissists. She told me all that until we get to the end of the relationship when I finally had had enough and couldn't take it anymore and finally went and got some uh, a, a therapist and a psychiatrist she finally admitted that she was certified as a narcissist and during this process i had to go back and I, what i realized with black folks we are one of the we are we refuse to deal with our past we try to act like our past is the past and we don't recognize that as long as you keep acting like the past is the past and you don't deal with it it's still your present so you're just dragging it along yeah. with you until you deal with it and yes. so if you, if you continue that's a say that one more time say it again that as long that, as you start say it again that is that as long as until you deal with your past it's still your present you're still dragging it along with you you haven't the past until you deal with it. that is for a lot of you young guys or even you older guys those are words of wisdom right there that you're not going to hear in many places you're not going to hear these words of wisdom that is deep wisdom from a man that has lived it, right? He's been through these experiences. Take heed to what this man is just saying. Listen you know what? to what he's saying and carefully contemplate him. Go ahead, brother. This is how God gave it to me. I have a scar on my uh, right leg. I fell. Oh, another guy jumped off the curb. I just fell and um, just got the scar. So as a kid, you know how you are. You just 
grab a old dirty towel you had on the bike and wrap it up. Uh, go play around or whatever. So it didn't hurt that much when I did it. This is what I'm talking about. This is how God told us. It was teaching me about dealing with our wounds. So it didn't hurt that much when I did it. I go home and tell my mom about it. Of course, she takes the towel off. My mom goes to do the work of, of, of dealing with it. She pulls out the rocks and all the, the infection. And, and it hurt worse than when I did it. But now all I have is a, a, a mark, a scar. It's healed. It doesn't hurt when I touch it. It doesn't. It, it's it's fine. It's just a, a scar. But so many of us are walking around with festering wounds. Important. Huh? I think that's so important, brother, because sometimes dealing with the pain is going to hurt a little bit worse or maybe sometimes much worse than actually the pain itself. Yes, the healing, but the, the healing only process. way to get past it and heal from it is to go through the pain. Mm -hmm. You have to go through the pain. There is no way to escape it. We live in a society today where no one, nobody wants to face that pain. Yeah, the they healing process is more painful than the, the process of going through the pain itself. Yeah, and that's they, they don't want, most people don't want to deal with that, and especially men. We want to always... You know, I have so many men that believe they they're tough minded. They're they're strong. I got to hold this together. Actually, I would make women, a differ, and hey, I would say, on, hold on, people. brother, one second. Okay, okay, hold on, brother, one second. A lot of men or a lot of people, women included, don't realize unless you've been through this as a man, they don't understand this. When we're trying to be the Will Smith type, when we're trying to be the Will Smith, what happens is this we will go all out of our way and forego all of our needs our emotions in order to make a woman happy yep in order to yep. keep a family yes. together but once, yes. in order to try to yes. do the right that was will smith oh hold on right in order to try to do the right thing but what ends up happening is nobody ever hears nobody ever listens taken for granted you know, our, yeah our voice we're where our kindness is taken for weakness we're made fun of later in life. We're told, like men like me told all the time, um, you don't, no woman wants to be with you. You don't have no woman. You don't have no wife. How are you on here trying to talk about this stuff and you this, you that? They'll do this. They'll try to shame and guilt and all of this stuff, not even knowing all the work. You could have put in 15 years of dedication, loyalty, hard work, trying to do what was right by a woman. Hey, can I add this one little piece? While you sitting there listening to it, all these women say, there are no good men out there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. They be, Because, right, we know because the same recycled dudes are in their DMs all day and night. But men that are healed, men that have gone through the fire, here's one thing that we can say about ourselves. Once we've gone through the fire and healed and come out on it, we're the unstoppable man. Yes. There's nothing that will hold us back. We can, like, literally, that, that is one of the, if you can overcome the pain and hurt of what a woman has done to you in life, you can overcome anything. Because her scorn, her um, promiscuity, her cheating on you, lying to you, if you were trying to do the right thing and be a good guy, there is no business failure that can compare. There's no um, being done wrong or being, you know, by a police or that can't compare. Nothing can compare. Once you've recovered and healed and figured out what happened between you and a woman, there's nothing. There's not. I said this all the time. I've been through many challenges, many tests, many hard times. There's one or two women that i've had to deal with in my life that is not in any nothing that i've dealt with in life was in comparison to them nothing the couple of women that i dealt with in my lifetime that were like this there's nothing in comparison to that and i've been through some hard patches come out of poverty bullied in school like all kind of stuff right have to fight through all that have to fight through all that but the testimony is I came out of whatever happened between me and trying to make this woman happy, trying to please this woman, trying to be a lot of us guys. We've been trying to be Will Smith. Yeah. We've been trying to do that. Right. We've been trying to keep this together. We've um, and this is why I have this up here, because although 
Women like Jada have taken advantage of men like us and become opportunist. We can still take the accountability. That yeah. is something we can't do. All right, that's the biggest part. Do, do, do y'all hear me? That is something they don't have that ability. They're weak. They're weak. They're insecure. They say they were young and dumb. They they can't take this accountability. They still can't say, you know what, through it all, I messed up. Oh no, you ain't never gonna get that. You ain't, yeah, never, gonna, you ain't never gonna hear them say, Oh, I messed up. It was my fault. No, that's what we do. That's what men do. We admit. I would say I, I beg to differ. I'm I'm just my my what I've experienced. And my experience is, is because I've been on both ends. My my first the person that victimized me was my mother. My stepfather sat there and watched it. I would say that both the that, that people don't take accountability. In this country, this country has driven us and pushed us into a way where we I mean, we had a whole president that didn't take accountability for nothing he did. So we in this country, we're being pushed and taught to not take accountability. And then to say that, you know, to, that women support each other. No, they don't. They support each other in mess. So go, girl, do what you, you know, do what makes you happy. But if she's trying to stay with her marriage, you ain't saying that. So it's like we are becoming a bunch of immature, we become a, a bunch of uh, grown adults. Oh, no. I mean, children, when, when grown she, children. When she, I ain't, I'm not trying to cut you off. I'm sorry, brother. But, Are you um, all right? Go ahead. When she when she is trying to stay in her marriage, you know what they tell her? You deserve you better. Pick me. You can yep, do you better. Pick me. Yep. Because they don't want her to be it's happier than her. Yeah, it's always separation being taught. Yeah, it's, it's that's the line. It's the line. Because and, I don't want you to be happier than me. And it's normally it's normally a friend that likes the same sex. But again you know what i'm starting to see is that we're becoming a nation of uh, i call us undeveloped adults because what it is if you look at it it's maturity level it's the difference in between being a child and an adult did you take the cookie no i didn't take the cookie but an adult say yeah i took the cookie i knew it was wrong but i took the cookie anyway i'm sorry i won't do it again but a child will sit there or a teenager will sit there and try to deny deny you got crumbs over your face oh uh uh, uh that's from the cookie i ate yesterday I mean, would do anything but accept the truth. When you talk to your children or you deal with your children, for people who've had children, look at these the same adults and look at these children. How, other than they're bigger than them and older, you can't really tell the difference. They're just throwing an adult tension tantrum. They're doing the exact same thing a child would do. Look at how she responds when she was interviewed about this stuff in the past. Instead of admitting her fault, her uh, flaws, her, her problems, her issues, she said, I got wrapped up in an entanglement with another man. Exactly. That was and that's and that's supposed to justify <laughs> mockery, really. That was word salad for I'm not gonna admit that I did anything wrong. I did what I wanted to do. If you got a problem with it, leave. Yeah, they don't see, and that's the thing. I was just talking about this, exactly what you just said a second ago, brother, to the brother that was talking about how you can have all the evidence on your face and everything, and they still will deny it. I was talking about that with a lot of the modern day women, and, uh, that they're under undeveloped and underdeveloped, right? Because this is how they speak. This is how they behave. They won't um, come out and, like, if there's an issue, right, with the relationship, they're not going to want to sit down with you and talk you through it, right? Instead... They're going to go out, they're going to get dressed up, the girlfriend, girls night out, all this other stuff, the provocative dress, you know, they're going to do these types of things. And what they're really doing and saying, right, imagine that child, a little kid, you know, we teach children, we should teach children, hey, um, when and you're in life, you're not going to always get things your way. This is life. There are certain things that people are going to get. Others are not going to get it. There are certain things you're going to have to walk, work hard for. And cert, sometimes you're going to work really hard and you're still not going to get it. But the program this is part of life, right? But here's what, they, here's what one of those children will do. No, I don't care. I'm going to find a way and get it my way. It's going to be my way. 
That's literally what these under and undeveloped W's do. They literally are screaming that 24 seven. No, I'm going to get it my way. You watch, I'm going to find it. I'm going to get it. It's going to be my way. So they'll do things sexually. They'll lie. They'll cheat. They'll, 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 they ratchet ass mammies. What? Yeah, act like they sit there and act like they ratchet ass mammies. Yes, monkey see monkey and, and you know the scenario the program tells them to you know the scenario way. they run with happy happy wife happy life and that's the programming and the the more they feed into it the bigger the conglomerates get and the more money they can get from them and they don't realize the trap that's been laid before them and the trap that was put in front of us as men we are already in it so we know what's going on we're trying to tell them hey yo no don't do it yeah Stop. we like it and they're like no we're gonna we're gonna go we're gonna do it we're gonna be like y'all like no please just stop <laughs> yeah i honestly do notice that fathers pay more attention to to what the children are paying attention to than the mothers acting crazy in front of them i do notice that you know, a lot you know they talk about they talk about protection all the time but do you realize that sometimes as a, as a father we have to protect the children from you would protect protect you from the children preach let, let me let me show you. this is the last video i posted does anybody uh on here not uh is anyone on here not aware of the brick incident that happened Everybody i'm not aware <laughs> the woman that was supposedly hit with the brick and there was a, there were two bricks what, what happened yeah she was at the club i'm aware go ahead she, yeah she was, I know at, what she was at the about. nightclub and she was hit and her face sw swell up road road up right so Everybody should know when I post this, when I show this picture, everybody should know like this woman right here. That was the, the woman that got hit with the brick. But can we broadcast the real incident too? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, brother. Hold on. I need everybody to hold on. This woman right here. Everybody should know this woman right here. Right. Everybody should know this woman. Okay. So um, somebody sent me her IG timeline of uh, what she just posted on IG. So she got her forty thousand uh, dollars from everybody that donated to her, and this is what she's been up to. Look at my new haircut, y'all! And also, I was a caged animal last night. I had to come out. So for those of you that don't, uh, you know, have to block it some, she's in the uh, pole club. She's spanking the booty of a, of strippers. She's popping bottles. And then she just screamed that she had to come out. Is this the behavior of somebody that was, uh, that is traumatized from being hit with a brick by a man? Jesus Christ. That was, that's is that the behavior of somebody like that? No. That's, that's Not something that was turning up. Because they got a bag. I saw a child. Yeah. Exactly. They got a bag. You hear know what the brother said? He said that's how a child would act. That is a child. But that is a, not just a child. Now that they're grown, that is a highly manipulative, skilled, deceptive, dangerous child. An evil spirit, a demon. Evil. So it's like being in a wrong movie. I, I really like when I see these things, I feel like I'm in a freaking movie. <laughs> it's like, can that be real? The reality nope, is real life. Like, like movies emulate emulate real life. Women, attention for women is like sex for men. And the and and can somebody can mute? Somebody, there, it's a big echo. Yeah, can every everybody mute? Go ahead. All right, and and the mirror effect it doesn't seem to click with women you know it's the opposite so why are you guys trying to be like us and the biggest the biggest issue is that you guys don't even realize how many lines you are drawing and how many divides you're making and making it easier for us to be overcome as a people 
But the problem is what accountability do they have for anything that they do? What punishment, what accountability do they have for any mistake that they made? I mean, we know that their their accountability is minuscule. And once they do take accountability, it, it takes everything out of them just to admit that they're wrong. So how can we... Co- the only way we could correct it is is demonstrating good behavior at the beginning of their uh, learning experience. And so now we have to wait for a whole generation of women to use the little parts and pieces that they know that's going to actually get and keep a man and pass it down and then uh, let the fathers take over. So the, the next generation of women can be better for the next generation of men. But sadly, us and probably the generation after is not going to see that. Deborah, are you there? Deborah, are you there? I don't think you've spoken yet. Can you unmute? Can everybody mute? And then Deborah, are you there? Deborah, Deborah, are you there? Going once. All right, Deborah, I don't think you're there. I got another woman here. Let's see what she has to say about this subject. Um, I don't like to leave people sitting in the queue too long. Nay. Nay. Here we go. All right, she's gone too. Listen, don't y'all please, if y'all can request up, be ready to talk. Don't come up, don't waste my time because it, it takes away from my thought process in the show. And y'all not ready to talk. Be ready to talk when you come up here because I'm gonna give you the floor. Like right now, I'm about to ask Nicole to speak. Hi, how are um, you? Good. Go ahead, Nicole. What do you have? Well, on the, the gentleman that just spoke, I believe I agree with him totally. The women, most of the women, but not most of them, a lot of the women these days, they, they're they allowing their children to raise themselves. They don't have very much class and integrity. And you have to carry yourself as a woman to be considered a woman. You get what I'm saying? And you're always looking for a better man, but you have to start with self first. And this, these, the generation of women, some of them aren't very good, not good at all. Listen, there's a reason why I advise men right now. You don't need to be thinking about legacy, children, family, none of that. Especially if you live in the West, that should be far from your mind. Self-preservation is number one. No, no, no. At the end of the day, I don't believe that we should be putting the blame on the women, period, at the end of the fucking day. Like, let's hold men accountable. They wouldn't be Pookie and Ray Ray's. Mm -hmm. It's not hard to not be a Pookie and fucking Ray Ray if they were being raised and taught right at the end of the day. So it's not the women who seek these men because that's not what they're seeking in the first place. Don't you see me holding uh, Will Smith? Hold on, brothers, please. Don't you see me holding Will Smith accountable? What do you see up here? What do you think I'm doing? Y- y'all just come in here, don't even know what's going on. You ain't even read nothing. You don't know what's going on. You just get your trigger. I did read it. I did read it. I was just responding to what somebody said. They said the women choosing. You're triggered. Why would I be triggered? Because you ain't even read it. You ain't even been listening. We've been talking about it's still at the end of the day. He has to take accountability for marrying and being with her for over 20 years. Absolutely. But that's not the comment that I was talking about. The men need to take accountability. Because you you always talk about women choosing Pookie and Ray Ray's. And I'm just saying, sometimes they're not so easy to spot as you think. And I'm not triggered. I haven't chosen a Pookie or a Ray Ray. But I'm just saying. This is wild. Is there any men on this panel that don't understand that this is holding Will Smith accountable? By saying he picked an average BW, he married wrong. And he has to suffer. How do you not think this is not holding a man accountable? Hey, to put it in lamest terms, he got what he got because he chose to get it. 
true. And not only that, but he he stayed for over twenty years. And that I is the major the problem, thing, brother, for five years. So I understand. Right, that's the major problem, and I'm having this discussion because uh, our voices are never heard. This platform is for men. Y'all like to come in here and disrupt it and say here y'all go again blaming women no most of the time what i'm doing is i'm letting them know and educating them and getting them to reflect on their choices and decisions by being with thought pockets by going for a w just because of her sex appeal well i don't being, agree with will choosing her at all i think she is out of line period she continues to be what are you talking about will, then? Will then why do you come in here and say you we need the men need to be held accountable you just agreed no was i was actually thing. talking about a comment that somebody made that's it i wasn't yeah. talking about the overall why would you come in and just start talking about a comment well so that's my fault then will is a hostage right now and he's really suffering from stockholm syndrome right and the things that he's going through, he, he's allowing it to happen because not not only is his career on the line, but his children are at a stake and they're already emotionally unstable. PTSD too, and probably some depression. The problem is, is we haven't had enough fathers in the community and we haven't had a good enough nurturing mothers that have talked to us and warned us about the average bw right because some of them were taken off guard my mother she's one of them promote black love black love black love but now she's backed up off of that because she sees what a lot of the women are in the community yeah she sees that a lot you got a lot of jadas running around out here opportunists and you're not deceptive, deceptive women who are no good who are looking for an opportunity because all of you think you're princesses can i say something i don't okay my grandson he had a 3.8 grade point average ohio state gave him a full scholarship and he refused it because of a jada and he's 19 years old and i promote black love all the time i tell him all the time about these ratchet women it, all the time it's a ever it's an ongoing conversation that i have but um he finally like i said he finally enrolled in the service but they wouldn't let him in because of his hand well the the jada ended up shooting my grandson mm -hmm. yeah Sorry, my dear. So, here, here, and here's the thing. I want to tell you guys. Did he live or is he okay? He's okay. Yeah, is it, he, she, he got one grazed him on the stomach and the other one got him in the, in the buttocks. Okay. Now, now li listen to what she just said. He risked it all. The, the Here's the deeper problem, though. This is the concept y'all need to understand. There's so much of a deeper issue. The deeper issue is our women, the older women in the community, they have cognitive dissonance too. Yeah. Just like we have cognitive dissonance, they have it too, but in a different way. Their cognitive dissonance is 1970s and 80s black love. The black love that they mamas or grandmamas or whoever had, the black love that they seen in the black movies, that's their cognitive it's dissonance. Romance. And they believe, brother, please don't talk when I'm talking. They believe that that is still the reality today. Mm. They believe that that's the reality. And they their cognitive dissonance doesn't have them, even though they can see so many Nickies and Cardies and sexy reds out here in these streets. And even though they can warn like she did warn, right? You notice she also still said she promotes black love, mm. right? Because at this point, we've seen enough. There's enough evidence that the average one the average ones of them even though J jada don't have to present herself with tattoos and look like sexy red or megan or any of them she don't have to do that but what she had but she's been able to do is show through her words and actions her infatuation with tupac with that type of lifestyle with that type of man while at the same time trying to gain control over this type of man and these women a lot of them right 
in order to preserve or try to preserve black love, they'll overlook these type of things. And it's the same cognitive dissonance we have, but in a different way, right? Because we'll, we'll overlook the actions of the woman because of, well, she's telling me she's this and she's that and she only, you know, want to be with me and she trying to, you know, want to put that booty on me tonight or whatever. So then you'll start to overlook her actions. She's been doing this. She's been out doing this. There's evidence that she's doing that. You'll overlook all that because of this over here. That's a that's a huge problem with us men, especially black men. And I know that Will has had it. I could see the hurt and pain on his face a lot of times. Yeah, true. He's lived through this cognitive dissonance because I can tell you behind closed doors, you know, Will, Will baby, you know I love you. You know I've you've been the man for me for since I met you in the nineties. And you know we just we going through a rough patch right now, and we gonna work through it. We, you know, we always do, baby. We gonna work through these issues. You know, my mama loves you. You know, see there, here comes the gaslighting, right? And my mama loves you. We have a beautiful family, all these kids. Let's not throw this away. I don't even think, I think the highest form of disrespect was when, when I saw that her daughter wrote a letter to Tupac I don't know if anybody else saw that. That was basically saying, if you come back, you'll make mommy happy. To me, when I saw that, I was like, oh my goodness. I haven't even seen that. And oh, that's, wow. That is the ultimate. That's just There's ultimate disrespect. This. this is this man's legacy family. I, his legacy is ruined now. And you, have, and you have more mention of Tupac than him. Yeah, that's crazy. That's insane. Amongst the media, amongst Jada, and amongst mm -hmm. his children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's and engaged. He was engaged before he passed, before it happened. He was engaged to another woman. He was married was to a lady named Keisha. He was actually yeah. married to some yeah, lady named Keisha. Married or engaged, just just imagine. And how should she feel now, you know? And right. You study so bringing much. up her husband. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Shameful. Yeah, I've been saying I don't know what Jada's issue is, but every day when I sit and me and my husband look at things and I'm like, dang, again, you know, the slap already. Right. Because at first I think we all were like, OK, he stood up for his wife. But then her response had me like, what? Yeah, Why, so would you <laughs> Why would you say that? That was crazy. She's a grown child with pain. That was crazy. That was crazy. No, no, I think it's intentional because Jada's not an ignorant woman. She knows exactly what she's doing. So it's not incidental. It's almost purposeful no, and it's messed up do. because Will has created a beautiful career and it's outshining his legacy. Just like that night of the slap. That will not, forever take, yeah. forever be the memory over him getting that award. Forever. Let, let's think about, yes, let's think about this. Not only Ooh. that night. But think about his entire body of work. That's what I'm saying. From, it's from rapper, yeah. hold on, hold on. From rapper to Fresh Prince, I'm just walking you down memory lane. Bad Boys, the I Am Legend stuff, the, I mean, everything is the, the pursuit of, the super pursuit of happiness. Yes. The Ali movie. Seven pounds. I mean, let's, let's think about, he has a huge body of work. Catalog. But, what what is he's gonna be remembered for his legacy is his problems with Jada. Yep. No, I, I I feel like he can bounce back. I feel like he I can, feel like but he, has... he needs to let Jada go. There's yeah, no way that he can and keep her. How old do y'all think Will Smith is? Thirty years old. No, I know Will. Smith. I know Will back. is like fifty. Well, like fifty eight or something like that. I know. Man is I think he means yeah, yeah. clean up his name. Because he, well, we want him to, because that's sad, man. Like, he's he's the greatest. But he's not going to be able to, but that's the point. He's not going to, you know why he can't? Because he's going to be forever tied to her. He spent too much time and too many years Christ. with her. All the time. Any time her name comes up, it's going to overshadow whatever. He can go make 15 more box office movies in, in his 60s. I can't feel sorry well, for him, though, because. Hold on, man. Oh, my bad, on, my bad. Man. If if he makes 15 more box office movies, if after movie number 15, 
Jada's brought up again and Tupac. It's going to overshadow everything. <laughs> That's crazy. Hey, Guru, you think he could pull a Morgan Freeman? What's that? Yeah, what I that mean? He, I think he could be. I think he could be like Morgan. Morgan's the man. Morgan Freeman's the man. I think he could be like Morgan. But the problem is, is that the the Jada issue, like Morgan Freeman, doesn't have that, right? Right. He doesn't have that type of baggage or fruit that that shadow overhang. She is a shadow overhanging him, mm -hmm. and he should have got rid of this a long 10, time ago. And she's choosing to be the bane of his existence. A long time. Yes, ago. she is. She is on purpose. But when I seen that red table talk when they did the fist bump, what they say, bad marriages for life. So in my mind, right, this is a very intelligent man. This man reads a lot of books. He does a lot of things. At this point, he's choosing it for whatever reason. We don't know, but he's choosing this reality. He he could have been well, not had. Will Smith was what the sexiest man alive. He didn't had so many titles he could have been left. But for whatever reason, when it comes to them, we don't know what agreement they have behind closed doors. But that red Nicole, table talk, huh? Nicole, the problem is we do have insight, right? Because we're black men, and we've been talking on here for a while. We've been talking about the reasons why this is the, this platform is meant to give a lot of people insight, especially women. What is the reason why these men have spoken? I've spoken on it today. What is the reason why a man who wants to be similar like Will Smith and keep a clean image and a family and children, why would he stay in one of these environments? And we've already been discussing it. You're yeah, but I'm just saying, I don't know why he would say that. You don't, I don't know if you saw that Red Table Talk. He, they said bad marriages for life. They said they agreed that they would not get divorced under any circumstances. So I'm just saying it makes me think what what agreements or what they got going on for real like maybe she got okay, something on him or something thing. here's the thing if you go watch shows like maury and all these other type of paternity shows there are men that will say after they've learned five years into it they're not the father of that child then the the host will say what are you going to do now the men will say I've been here this whole time for this child. I okay. love this child. I'm not, I'm not going to let this child go. I'm going to keep taking care of it. Do you understand what I'm saying? No, I hear you. It just don't make sense. I, that's all I'm saying. I'm just getting to your point. I don't, don't, I don't get to it. Sense to, it don't have to make sense to you. I'm telling, we're telling you how men, this is how we think. This is how we are. See, oh. I believe that even though you guys are supposed to be more nurturing than us, we actually have a more compassionate, kind spirit than y'all. We're men, I, I believe, so. are more forgiving. Men are more flexible than women. This is what I I, I don't think so because, because there's no practice. such thing as absolutes because there's I'm always people that I'm outside of that. I'm in general. I'm speaking in general. <laughs> right, which is an absolute. You're saying men and women. I don't th I don't know because everybody have different experiences. What are you talking about? I said I believe and then I said in general. What are you talking? I can believe. Here, here's the thing. You know this what? I'm just going to get off because I don't need it. Yeah, yeah, why yeah, don't you just get off? You're just argumentative and that's all you want to do is come up and argue. And you're talking about you got a husband? You probably do got a Will Smith at the house because I can tell you right now. Me and none of these other men that have been, we ain't going to be with no woman like you. Y'all got to go. That's the problem. The average BW. Now I, now the gloves is going to come off. She didn't brought them out. God dog it. I feel like taking off this tie. Because she didn't piss me off now. Never again. We are sick of y'all. Before We're you go. We're sick of can, your deep can hush. Can I'm speaking. You got to go too. Goodbye. We are sick of y'all. We're sick of y'all deep voices, your aggressiveness, your manipulation. We are sick of y'all spirit, your attitude, your nasty attitude, over talking constantly. Can't shut up. Always in some mess, some drama, and pulling us into it. Can't sit still, can't be at home. Always gotta be in the streets. Love these wigs and this fake drag look more than you love a man. It's ugly, it's cheap. You look like clowns out here.
and you've made a whole clown of yourself. The whole world thinks like this of y'all. You don't even realize it. I talk to people secretly sometimes from different parts of the world. They'll say, well, you know, no disrespect, Guru, but this, isn't this how the black women are? We know a lot about the black women. And sometimes they'll stereotype black men too, and I'll correct them. The whole world thinks a certain way about y'all. But y'all steady yet come in here and cause these problems. Can't shut up, can't keep a man, don't know how to keep a man. The only man that you can possibly try to keep is a simp. Because he's weak and he wants some intercourse or whatever, a place to stay or whatever. That's the only man you can keep. You got to manipulate him most of the time. That's the only way you can keep him. You are the worst caretakers of children out here. Your children are doing absolutely horrible. Look at her children all the money in the world, and look at how our children turned out. A bunch of liars and the truth ain't in you, and a bunch of hypocrites. Thank you so much, Val, for the donation. Val, I appreciate you so much. This, this woman always donates to me very big contributions. Thank you so much, Val. She said, great topic today. Yes, ma'am, Suad, I got your donation. Suad sent me a donation. She said, for black men who suffer silently. Suad sent me a donation. She said, for black men who suffer silently. There are a lot of us who suffer silently because we have to deal with these creatures. We have to deal with a lot of these creatures out here who could care less, who have no compassion, no understanding, no love, nothing. There's no emotion. They don't care about you. Everything's about them. They're selfish and wicked. They don't care about you. Uh, folks, do me a favor. I'm trying to hit the next goal of 75K likes. I will be on here. I will stay on here. I have about another hour in me, but we need five people in the next five minutes to donate. Go to my little head at the top. Click on my head and donate, contribute, support the platform. I see you, brother. I'm going to let you speak in one second. Support the platform, donate, hit the cash board to PayPal. I don't care which one you hit. Support the platform so that we can keep this going. I got one more hour in me before I have to go. Um, if you guys want this to continue. Here we go, as usual, gifts. Well, you know what? Why are you on here watching? You're a fool. This is how I operate my platform. I've been operating it this way for a year. If you don't like it, if you don't want to support, then don't watch it. Leave. If you don't want to hit the cash, then leave. If you don't want to hit the PayPal, leave. You want to run your mouth in these comments and talk all this stuff, leave or I'm going to get you up out of here. Don't worry. I'm watching these comments really, really closely now because we are tired and sick of y'all. We're sick of y'all mess. We're sick of your ugly, that ugly face that's underneath all that makeup and those lashes that you have to cover up. It's ugly and you know it's ugly. That's why you put it, all that stuff on there to try to cover it up because you know it's ugly. You know, it looks wicked. You know that it's shameful. Yeah, I'm sure you do need your lashes. You see that? You need them. You can't do without them. You can't live without them lashes. You can't live without because you know it's ugly underneath there. You don't want to work on self. You don't want to improve self. You don't want to put the work in and try to be a better woman on the inside, internal. That's what being a woman is about. Your womanity, your femininity, shout out to Kana for womanity, that is on the inside of you. Not what you have on the outside of you. Not no ass. Ass don't make you no woman. Other than here talking about Jada Pinkett is a beautiful black queen and she has a great mindset. Absolutely not. If she had such a great mindset and she was such a black queen, she would have never did the man that she married the way that she did him. Because queens don't do that. 
Queens don't move in ridiculous circles and do ridiculous things like that to the man that they marry. Stop it, brother. You just a simp. You a decepticon. This is what I call you. And ladies that are in here, as men, we want you to understand that when we speak this way, when we speak with this passion and we speak with this strength and this, and this firm tone, that's because we actually care. We care about the ones who want to make the change. We care about the ones who want to listen. We care about the ones who want to get the knowledge. We just got these BWs and these Ws coming here trolling. Guru, they do it because they're mad. They do it because they hate them. Like you said, we put on our suits. We draw. We look nice. We speak nice. And the first thing they do is talk bad about us. Why would you talk about a man that's dressing nice? Why would you talk about a man that's trying to give you knowledge to help you and help the brothers around here? That's what they do. If it doesn't pertain to the trash that they like, the disgustingness that they want to involve themselves with, the promiscuity act activities that they doing, all of this stuff like that, they don't want to hear us. But then again, they do want to hear us because they jump in your life and they jump in my life and they just comment over and over and over again. If you don't want the knowledge, why are you here? If you don't want to hear what we're talking about, why are you even here? Then again, at the same time, it'd be those same weak-minded, choosing ignorance over intelligent type women that always ask what a strong man at, what a real man at. You don't want no strong, real man. You want the Decepticons like this guy up in here talking about Jada Pinkett was is a is a queen. Queens don't do that. Queens they they speak life. They help. They wait. They sit back and they make sure that they're paying attention to everything that their king is making the right moves. And when it's time for her to make her move, then she makes her move. Y'all, man, I'm look, brother, brother. Brother, did you ever watch the movie Girls Trip that she played in with those other BWs? I saw that. I saw that. I couldn't. There is no way. I don't care if my wife was an actress. There is no way my wife would have been in that movie doing what she was doing in that, that movie. movie. For real. And I'm, she was one of the nastiest ones in the movie. Purposely. And y'all don't understand this is I, in, in, in my problem, the problem that we do have, I'm going to say it once again, because I say it very strongly. Some of these women just have a lack of knowledge of self. They don't know themselves. They don't understand themselves. They think they know themselves by watching other women, listening to other women and doing what other women do. So they think that they are them. They don't even know how to separate themselves from those people. That's why brothers like us say they all look the same. They all act the same and they all do the same things because they place themselves in that situation. They want to be like these other women thinking these women are liberated. Liberated from what? They're not doing nothing but digging deeper holes for themselves. Want to be like men, talk like men, dressing all the way that they, I mean, like dressing this, I don't know. I, I just say they might as well be naked, you know, and walk around and don't expect consequences for their actions. They are lost, my brother. And the more we try to help them understand or try to bring them back, the more they fight us. The more they attack us, they attack us because we're not the simps that's, uh, that, that, that agree with this type of stuff that they're doing. We're not the simps that uh, be like, yeah, baby, you can do whatever you want to do. What type of man will tell his woman she could do whatever she want to do and she do whatever she want to do, put both of their lives in jeopardy, put their family in jeopardy? Come on, man. Real men, what we call them, though, Brother Guru, what you call them? Jellybacks. Jellybacks. <laughs> Jellybacks. And, mm, yeah. and, and the thing is, we tell men to become stronger. We guide men to be better men. I have written a book that says a guideline to becoming a better man so that you can be able to stand firm on your foundation and make sure that your structure is strong because it's women out here are looking for men that don't have that just so they can take control of you. But then call well, us. Brother, what did you say? She was one of those women and opportunists that found a way. That's what I said earlier. She couldn't control Tupac like she was able to control this. No, man. not at all. She was definitely an opportunist. She knew it. And then she keeps saying it. Yeah. She, did you see that? She, Tupac was my soulmate. Yeah, I saw you know what I'm saying? Of, I'm like, for real, though, when you married to Will Smith, this man is That is sickening. That, that, brother, do you know how they don't realize how bad that is for a man to hear 
that from your wife that's horrible <laughs> now brother now think about this now what because she said she's saying not now that y'all separated he's your soulmate she's met she's telling you in the world he's always my soulmate how is that what kind of wife is that fam now what now i bet you but these women to be complaining oh why will smith start doing women like this and start treating women like that look what he went through you think he gonna trust another woman? You think he's gonna, you know what I'm saying, place himself in a situation to where he, uh, you know, give up everything all, all over again?